Hello, this is Michael Stewart. I am the Regional Vice President, Product Management at Cineverse. Today, I'll be talking to you about Cineverse and 5G. Uh, we'll go over some uh, industry information, uh, some challenges, and some uh, uh, forward progress that uh, has been made in 5G. And uh, we'll talk about some of the challenges that mobile operators uh, have and some of the solutions that Cineverse has to, uh, to help you meet those challenges. So here we have a view of the 5G rollout uh, globally. As of end August, there were 97 operators in 42 countries with commercial launches. All of those 5G launches are what we call 5G non-standalone, which means that even though there's a 5G air interface and a 5G capable handset or mobile device, the core infrastructure is still based on uh, what we call the Evolve Packet Core, which is a 4G LTE technology. So to the left here for non-standalone 5G, really, as I said earlier, that technology uh, continues to use the Evolve Packet Core infrastructure. And what that means is even though the radio interface is a 5G capable interface, um, it still communicates back to a 4G LTE core. Because of the advantages of the 5G frequencies and the density and speed that can be gained on the air interface side, there's still an advantage for customers uh, in the new 5G environment. But 5G, uh, the full suite of 5G services won't be available until the 5G core is deployed. So under 5G non-standalone, we're still using the IPX network. We're still using the diameter protocol for signaling. Uh, many times uh, 3G even comes into play when we have circuit switch fallback. Um, but uh, we also need to support business intelligence uh, in the 5G non-standalone solution. And one area there that we've seen some interest is where mobile operators are wanting to see the balance, if you will, of usage between their legacy 3G, 4G, and, 5, and new 5G networks. So in a roaming environment, uh, when subscribers are roaming out in the world, uh, we are uh, providing the ability to understand how much of those roaming transactions are 4G, how much are actually 5G roaming transactions, and that gives us a little bit better intelligence on maybe how to market, how to focus our roaming agreements, uh, and then what the uptake of the technology actually is. Our mobile policy control center uh, is another area uh, which adds value in the 5G non-standalone space. Uh, things like uh, limiting the amount of bandwidth consumption is very important because now, with the 5G interface, we have a lot more bandwidth available to the subscriber potentially. And we wanna make sure that we're not overdriving the network or overdriving our business agreements uh, from a, uh, from a uh, usage perspective of bandwidth. And in addition, the mobile policy uh, capability provides us uh, with the ability to offer retail plans that can focus in on maybe an upsell of the 5G roaming experience. There's a uh, universal clearing that Cineverse offers that is based on um, uh, some uh, uh, technologies for um, uh, you know, being able to handle multiple clearing scenarios uh, because what 5G is bringing to the table are a lot of different usage and commercial models that quite frankly, the old way of clearing those transactions just wouldn't be uh, sufficient uh, to handle. So our objective here with non-standalone 5G is really to identify and monetize the roaming that's occurring uh, on the 5G networks. Um, now, as we move into the future, uh, we're looking at 5G standalone, which means that we have a 5G core, right? So instead of depending on the 5 and, and the EPC core, we now have a full 5G core and this core is what provides us with the underlying capabilities that allow us to further expand uh, the, the uh, capabilities of the network. So under the 5G standalone solution, 
Uh, Cineverse has developed a 5G signaling controller. Uh, this is to accommodate the new uh, signaling protocol, which is replacing diameter uh, in 4G uh, to HTTP2. And this uh, uh, signaling controller acts as a proxy, can act as a, uh, an edge uh, uh, network device, uh, just in a very similar fashion to the diameter proxy. Um, but uh, with the rollout of uh, 5G core capability, we need to have the ability to, um, to do the same types of similar types of manipulation in these signaling protocols. There's certain rules that we can apply to that signaling that helps operators either address uh, protocol issues or manufacturing OEM issues with, uh, with compatibility, as well as controlling maybe which roaming partner can actually roam 5G. Uh, the next service, uh, Hosted Security Protection Proxy. You'll see an acronym SEPP for this one. And this is really kind of like a, uh, a 5G firewall, uh, if you will. Um, we currently have a uh, uh, production capability here as well. Uh, and I want to mention that we're available for lab testing uh, to help our customers uh, with the, the new technologies. And maybe you're rolling out uh, some new suppliers in your core. We would be more than happy to, uh, to assist you in any trials or, or lab tests, as well as trials to production, for that matter. Again, uh, mobile policy will be adapting to uh, 5G standalone, as well as uh, data clearing, which is already in production. Our uh, universal clearing product is, is already there to answer all of the needs from a clearing perspective for a 5G operator. And our objective here really is to provide global reach on 5G uh, standalone networks, right? So where we're providing that global reach and monetizing roaming in a 5G non-standalone environment, which is really a hybrid 5G, 4G environment. As we move into 5G standalone, we really wanna make sure that all of the different new capabilities that are required to enable 5G standalone uh, are there and ready for our customers to, uh, to take advantage of. And then lastly, as we move into uh, later parts of 2021, I would imagine, uh, we're gonna start seeing a renewed, uh, uh, I think, uh, focus on network slicing because uh, the real story here with network slicing is it allows the mobile operator to uh, monetize the investment they've made in their 5G infrastructure. Uh, you, can, you can actually allocate uh, a portion of that uh, newfound bandwidth that you have available on your, on your 5G network uh, to enterprises that, uh, that would like to run their own service uh, the way they see fit. And uh, where Cineverse comes in is on the roaming side, right? So as we uh, uh, develop these, these home-based network slicing capabilities, there's gonna be a need to extend that slice uh, to a serving market or a roaming partner. And Cineverse is uh, very involved in the GSMA and uh, working on developing uh, standards in order to uh, ensure that the network slicing experience can be extended in a roaming environment. And I think this is going to be imp important for multinational and global based uh, enterprises. Um, we already see, you know, uh, this kind of a thing happening on the LTE side with needing to connect uh, cars um, and needing to uh, stick to a strict latency budget or a strict KPI QoS budget. Uh, network slicing is going to take that uh, much farther and, and really enable use cases that um, aren't, aren't possible today. And as you can see under this slicing solution, we're still using our 5G signaling controller. Um, po mobile policy is going to be part of this because really in order to, under, you know, to, to extend that slice into a serving market, we need to have some policy uh, capability there. And then data clearing uh, with slice differentiation. So we're going to be able to clear various uh, types of uh, commercial models under slicing. Uh, and then um, lastly, with the IPX transport, the IPX is gonna have to know uh, how to treat some of these um, uh, slicing models uh, a little more finite than what we do today with the normal uh, class of service designation. So all of these things are under development. Finally, um, I just want to uh, make some observations here about, you know, 5G roaming and what is compatible, what is not compatible. And we need to understand that uh, 
you know, in most cases, operators are moving from a legacy environment to a, a, a 5G environment. So that legacy environment today typically consists of 2G, 3G technologies, which includes 5G uh, SS7 signaling. It also includes 4G, LTE, diameter signaling, IPX. But where 5G comes in, the 5G core, um, you need to, to understand that there are certain roaming scenarios that are not supported under the GSMA guidelines. For example, um, a 5G core uh, to a 4G uh, core uh, is not supported. Uh, the 5G core will need to be a unified core, which will need to still support the legacy protocols, uh, such as diameter, for example. Um, even SS7 for circuit switch fallback, for those scenarios where you have a roaming transaction occurring and call delivery occurring to a 3G market, um, these are things that we still have to support today. Uh, we still need to make sure that we can provide the interoperability between uh, all of your roaming partners uh, around the globe, right? So um, we, can't, uh, we can't make any assumptions that, you know, overnight we're going to move to a new technology. This takes time, as you all know. It takes uh, many, many years to finally get to where we need to be from a coverage perspective, from a technology perspective, from a commercial perspective. And we need to make sure that each of the different roaming scenarios are covered uh, from, from a technology basis. And that's what really Cineverse is, uh, is an expert at. We, uh, we, over the years, have been uh, through many of these technology transitions. And as you can see here, uh, we've uh, provided the capability for our customers to interoperate and still have the use of the new 5G technologies, but still be able to interoperate with uh, 3G um, roaming partners and provide your customers with the best roaming experience possible. 